How's it going guys? My name is Tavarsh and today you're joining me on an empty lift because I just sold my Aston Martin V8 Vantage and although it was a dream car of mine, it wasn't actually that hard to let go. <laughs> But the reason I'm making this video today is because although exotic sports cars like the Aston Martin can be branded money pits, I managed to drive mine for nearly two years for free. And no, you don't have to buy my ebook to find out how I did it. So let's begin with a little bit of history on this car. We start as every good YouTube video starts with Doug DeMiro. Bumper to bumper. So Doug bought the Aston a year before I did when we were both writing for Jalopnik and he bought it so he could write about it in articles about how it was to own and how much it would cost to get it fixed. And also the fact that he had a bumper to bumper warranty. He did not let you forget that. Bumper to bumper. So he drove it on ice. He drove it across the country multiple times and he chronicled the process. But when Doug was done, he made a tally of everything he spent on that car and it was quite daunting. According to him, he spent $23,000 on depreciation repairs and all that other stuff. That was the ownership cost for his Aston Martin. Now, while Doug was racking up the miles during that year, I knew that the car would be mine because as soon as he announced it to the world that he had an Aston Martin V8 Vantage with a bumper to bumper warranty, bumper bumper. I gave him a text message and I said, please, Doug, please sell me this car when you're done with it. I know that you take a hit on depreciation uh, after a certain amount. I know you're gonna put a lot of miles on it and uh, I really, really want this car. It was a dream car of mine. He agreed and a year later, it was mine. So we flash forward to the sale date of October, 2016 and I flew to Philadelphia where I was born and raised on the playground is where I spent most of my And I picked up my new to me Aston Martin V8 Vantage and I was, I, I was over the moon ecstatic. Oh my God. I have an Aston Martin. <laughs> I then drove it to my parents' house in New Jersey and the very first thing, the very first day that I had the car, I took out the fuse for the exhaust baffling and it sounded like this. So then I took it for a trip to Pennsylvania to visit Mr. Regular of Regular Car Reviews to have his fans roast my car and it went well, I can barely afford my V8 Vantage, so instead of buying an exhaust, I just pulled out the fuse that makes it quiet when I'm driving it around town. So I drove the car a thousand miles back here to Florida so I can find out that the car was basically a Volvo. I had an exhaust put on and also I installed a BC Racing coilover suspension. <laughs> Boy, everything is shifting around in here. Within that time, the speakers in the front stopped working and the AC quit on me on the hottest day of the year. But I fixed all those issues for free and I had a car that accelerated like a stabbed rat. It handled like a fly and it sounded like a divine fart. Other than do some more invasive mods like forced induction that would likely blow up the engine because I like chasing power, I decided to sell the car and fund some other projects that can take the power and uh, I wouldn't mind breaking those. But it all comes down to brass tacks. How much did the Aston Martin cost for me to own for nearly two years? Well, let's see. So keep in mind, I'm rounding these numbers out. I bought the car for $36,000. Insurance on this car was about $1,600, $100 per month for 16 months. Um, and registration was about $50 a year. But I'm not counting registration and insurance because it is a cost that is associated with every person, even though it can be different for every person. So take that with a grain of salt. It is a necessary cost, but my cost might not be your cost. So I drove this car around 5,000 miles. And over those 5,000 miles, fuel costs alone were around $850 which is not great if you're in a family car, but if you're in a sports car, that's actually pretty decent. So 5,000 miles also doesn't sound like a lot, but on Aston Martin, that is pretty good mileage. I know Doug did 20,000 miles when he drove it, but uh, I wasn't gonna drive across the country. I wasn't planning on doing anything uh, uh, super crazy. I just wanted to have a good car that I could enjoy, uh, that I didn't have to sell for the sake of a story. So then comes the repairs. How much does it cost to repair a hand-built sports car 
from Britain. Well, I get a lot of questions about that if I used the bumper to bumper warranty that Doug had. And I actually did have a few months of warranty. I had about two months of warranty left when I bought the car. And I was offered a re-up of that same warranty for one more year for $5,000 from Aston Martin. And what I told them is, buy the, the shirt in the description below. Believe it or not, I spent zero dollars in repairs in the time I've had it. Now, it's not because it didn't have issues, it did. It had that intermittent problem with the speakers where they would cut in and out, I fixed that. It had that problem with the AC where it just wouldn't blow cold, I fixed that. And it had a problem with the starter, which was almost like a design flaw because the starter is located directly next to the very, very hot exhaust manifold. And when you drive sort of like I do, and uh, you drive it hard and put away wet, uh, the starter tends to seize up from the heat. So I fixed that myself over time. I actually bought a new starter, but I returned it. I fixed it by basically not driving like a complete idiot for the last two or three miles and the car never had that problem again. I swear to you, that is the solution. Just don't drive like your hair is on fire. Oh, where'd it go? Maintenance was around $250. That includes oil, oil filters, and everything associated with that. There's gaskets, and this is a dry sum system. So it was a little bit more complicated than your usual Hyundai oil change. But that was around 250 bucks. And uh, the air filters were fine. I didn't touch them. The brakes were fine as well. Doug did those, thank you very much. So including the price of the car, the Aston cost me $37,100. But I'll give you a little secret. When you're a YouTube personality or you have a blog or something like that where you talk about cars and you have a little bit of a following, parts companies and suppliers, they come to you and they want you to try out their parts. They want you to do reviews, they want you to do uh, sort of installs and they give you parts for free. Now, what happens when you put those parts on, you still have your stock parts left over. And what happened with me is that I now have an Aston Martin suspension, an Aston Martin exhaust, and some other Aston Martin bits and bobs that uh, I took out when I installed the aftermarket stuff. And it turns out those components that I took off the car have a street value of around 1,000 to 1,200 bucks, depending on if I find the right buyer. So I'm gonna wipe those costs out. Now, the final sale price is something a lot of people worry about, especially with sports cars, with exotic sports cars. But you shouldn't if you buy it right and you know what things are worth. Not, not you, Craigslist sellers. Not, I know what it's worth. I got a Mustang from 1993. So I ended up selling the car to my good friend Greg at Shifting Lanes for $36,000. That's right, the exact same amount that I bought the car for. And I sort of knew that I would not lose money on this because I was watching trends on Auto Tempest, on eBay, Cars.com, Auto Trader, all those places and watching the market and seeing what cars were selling for. I was also watching the market for cars like the Aston Martin, like a Porsche 911. That's a direct competitor to uh, something like an Aston. So when you're at the floor of the depreciation and you buy a car at that floor, the only place you can go is up. The only place for the car to go is to appreciate. Now, I wasn't expecting this car to appreciate, even though it is rare enough it's a, it's a cool little six speed. It has 50, 50 weight distribution. It's a really good looking car. It looks like it could be made today, but I wasn't holding my breath to have this be the next E30 M3. So I decided to sell it at the same price. I didn't want to make any money. Um, I mean, I probably could have to the right buyer, but this was a good deal for Greg. This is a good deal for me. All right, I'll level with you guys. I know that not everyone has a YouTube channel. Not everyone has a successful enough YouTube channel that they can make money at it. And not everyone has a successful enough YouTube channel that they can get parts sponsorships and parts sent to them for exotic cars. So that parts price, I'm gonna put back because I know it doesn't apply to 99% of you. Uh, but even then, even at $1,100, this car, well, the car that used to be here, that's an insane value for money. So it's basically two car payments, two of the average car payments, is around $500 for average car payments in this country, which is insane. Two average car payments for two years to own an Aston Martin, no issues whatsoever. Now, there is a caveat. Now those cars, can be troublematic, troublematic? Did I, I just make up, make up a word? Troublesome and problematic. Whew. Now those cars can be 
problematic uh, if you don't do your research and you don't know what common issues are and you don't do, uh, it's just Googling, uh, going on forums and finding out that maybe something's not the end of the world, you don't have to take it to the dealer, there are things you can do to uh, remedy it at home or at a, uh, a competent mechanic that's an independent shop rather than the Aston Martin dealer. Now, if stuff breaks that's proprietary to Aston Martin, stuff like maybe body panels or maybe even that engine, then you're going to be in for a big bill because the only place you can get that is Aston Martin. The good part about that is everything on that car that's made by Aston Martin is incredibly resilient. Now the engine and drivetrain, all that stuff is made to last. Now the clutches are sort of finicky because they can cost $8,000 to replace. But those clutches, if you drive them right and you don't get that stupid sport shift, don't ever get the sport shift, you can actually get 60, 70, 80,000 miles out of a clutch. So you can defer that cost a long, long ways down. And the car will perform beautifully in that time. And uh, it's just gonna be a scheduled maintenance at that point anyway. That's why I always say you should get a PPI, a pre-purchase inspection before you see any car, before you consider buying any car. And you also schedule, well, you don't schedule, you allocate a certain amount of funds that's just gonna be for a rainy day. You never know what's gonna happen. Uh, you can have some sort of unforeseen breakdown, a rim could crack, who knows? Just have a little bit of money, maybe a few grand if you're gonna, gonna be spending 35 to 40 grand on this car anyway, have a few grand in the buffer and uh, that will go a long way into maintenance and repairs and all that stuff. And also it'll give you a little bit of peace of mind because yeah, a lot of people have some anxiety about driving these cars a lot. And I think Doug and I have proved that that is just complete nonsense. Like you can drive these cars as much as you want. So the thing about depreciation curves is that these sports cars depreciate like crazy. So this Aston Martin, when it first came out, was $130,000. And from there, it just did one of these in market value. So I bought it at here when it was around $36,000 and it never really left. It plateaued off and that's where you want to buy a car. Now, some cars have a lot of issues when they get to this plateau. So you want to make sure that you do a lot of research. Uh, sometimes gearbox failures, sometimes they have clutch issues. Uh, sometimes the engines just grenade themselves. I'm looking at you, BMW. But if you do your research and you can do stuff yourself, and if you can't do stuff yourself, if you have a good, competent, independent mechanic, then you you can have an exotic car of your own for not much money and uh, it really is a rewarding experience and I really didn't pay anything to do it for almost two years. Sports car ownership does not have to be a race to the bottom. But I want to know your thoughts. Was I a special case? Is it, I, do I have hands of magic? Do I just pick really good cars? Or am I missing something? Did I miss something about my valuation? You can let me know in the comments below. Uh, you can email me, you can contact me any way you want, but uh, I want to have a conversation with you guys. I want to know if you guys are considering buying something like an Aston Martin, like a Porsche. And even though that might not be in your price bracket, in your uh, kind of income bracket, certainly wasn't for me. Me. But uh, yeah, just let me know in the comments and I'd love to hear your thoughts. But for now, I'm just going to stare at this empty spot and sort of reminisce about the car that I loved so much and think about a project that I should start with the money. I'm, I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. So yeah, thanks for watching. Oh, crap.